prophets and look to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious God, our loving Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this wonderful morning. Lord, we give you all honor and glory for this blessed privilege to come into thy sanctuary, to meditate upon your word, to hear your word, and to participate in the blessed sacrament. Lord, be with us and strengthen us. Enable us to rejoice in your spirit and be sent out into this world to live a worthy life in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Greetings to you all in the most blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I bring greetings, greetings on behalf of my own family, on behalf of the congregation where I am serving in Phoenix, Christ Church Anglican. What a coincidence it is. Uh, after serving in Christ Church Lalaguda, I have been posted to Christ Church Anglican. And I always cherish my memories here. So I bring, bring greetings on behalf of Christ Church Anglican, our uh, vector and associate vector, and also on behalf of the bishop in the Diocese of Western Anglicans, Bishop Keith, and also the Archbishop of North America, Bishop Pauli. And I like to thank Brother Reverend Dr. Vasantrao for extending his invitation this morning to be with you all. I uh, have been moving around from place to place. And because as an elder brother, when he asked me, I do not want to dishonor this invitation. And moreover, I would like to see all the members back and uh, rejoice your presence. Greeting you all in the most blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The theme for our meditation this morning given to us is cost of discipleship. Cost of discipleship. What is the cost one is paying to be a disciple or follower of Jesus Christ? We need to question ourselves as we move forward uh, upon this theme. Are we really paying any cost or price to be a follower of Jesus Christ? We all have been incorporated by the virtue of baptism as the members of the body of Jesus Christ. As inheritance to the kingdom of God, we have been invited through the blessed sacrament and through the affirmation of faith in Jesus Christ. We have been part of the kingdom which has been inaugurated by our Lord Jesus Christ. And what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Very interestingly, James and John, in the gospel lesson, what we heard just now, reminds us a request placed before Jesus Christ. Asking Jesus Christ, Lord, whatever we ask, we want you to do that for us. It is not that whatever you say that we are going to do, they have put the question in other way round, asking Jesus, Lord, you be a person who always listens. You be a person who always does according to our will, according to our wish. And Jesus' response was, you do not know what you are asking. You do not know what you are asking. And Jesus placed before them two challenging questions. One is, can you drink the cup which I am going to drink? And the other one is, can you be baptized? The ways in which I am going to be baptized. For Jesus, the baptism or the drinking of the cup is to sacrifice his life. To give up everything. To abandon his own life, it is only to give life in abundance to all who believe in his name. The disciples, we do not know with what intention they have responded to Jesus Christ. Whether they were fully convinced that they are going to be beheaded, they are going to be persecuted. We do not know what was going on in their minds. Another gospel writer records the same incident that these two, they bring forth their mother and place this request. Whatever the context may be, here Jesus Christ is asking all of us this morning, can you be baptized 
with how Jesus Christ is going to be baptized. Can you drink the cup with Jesus Christ as drank the cup? What would be our response? With our lips we may say, by nodding our heads we may say yes. But when it comes to the real challenging situation, how far we withstand, how far we take up those challenging situations is a big question. In the Old Testament reading, what we have heard, we have been brought forth about the life and the testimony of Daniel. Daniel is a man of prayer. Here we see that Daniel, for doing nothing wrong, he has been placed in the lion's den. Even the one who is executing, he also knows about Daniel very much. Just because he is praying three times a day, he is being thrown into lions' den. In the Nehru Zoological Park, we hear sometimes news. Sometimes when curators, when they get into the lion's den to clean or to feed them, accidentally the doors, if they are open, they will not come out with life. We can imagine how challenging it is to see a lion in a zoo itself. Sometimes we feel threatened, insecure. We we'll make sure that everything is in order. Imagine Daniel have to spend throughout the night in the lion's den. But he did not give up his faith. For a Christ-centered person or a family, prayer is more important. A family which prays together will stay together. Daniel had been praying in a foreign land. He has been uprooted from his own motherland. He has been taken there as a slave in the city of Babylon. He was not having access to the temple in Jerusalem. He was not having any opportunities to meet his own community, to celebrate the events of Passover, or to gather in the synagogue, or in the temple. Though he has been deprived of all the spiritual activities in his life, though he was away from his motherland, uprooted from his social identity, Though he was not having any freedom, in the midst of uncertainty, we see that he was of sure that one day God is going to deliver the people of Israel. One day the Lord of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob is going to intervene in their lives and restore them back to the promised land. With that conviction, he has been praying. He has been praying three times a day, not merely as some of us pray just before breakfast, before lunch and before dinner. This was not that kind of prayer. Wholeheartedly, with great conviction, for the intervention of God's promises, fulfillment of God's promises, for the intervention of Lord in their day-to-day -day life, he has been praying. Though there was unfavorable situation, <coughs> The king issues a decree that no one should worship any other gods, only the king. In that challenging situation, he has been praying. For praying, the reward, what he received, is to spend one night in lions' den. What a challenging situation it is. What a challenging situation it is. Are we there enough to pray when some decree is issued? that you are not supposed to pray. In India, we have a lot of freedom as a secular country to pray. Are we really utilizing this time? Or are we taking any justifications? Not any of you know that I am very busy. Not you know this is the only slot where I can watch these telly soaps and serials. Not you know that today I have a visitor. Lord, you know that today I have to rush for an interview. Let me come back and do something for you. This is how we take God's time for granted. 
But here, Daniel's life is a reminder to all of us. In the midst of uncertainty, he made it a point to spend time in the presence of God. Here we see that because of the life of Daniel, the whole land of Babylon is blessed. The king was able to realize the essence in believing the living God. The king himself is so much so convinced that this wisdom comes from above. Daniel is a man of God. That is the reason he comes with a bitter voice and calls upon Daniel. Daniel, is your Lord working with you? The response was, yes, my king. You know that I did not do anything wrong against you or God. That is how we see Daniel was able to bear witness in his own lifetime. David was very much convinced that the Lord will hear or keep wide open his ears to the cry of the righteous. The lions may grow hungry and weak, but God's children will not go hungry. They will not lack any good thing. That is the experience of David. That is the experience of David. And that should be our experience. Another personality, what we have read from the episode lesson, is St. Paul. Is another interesting personality which always fascinates me. St. Paul is writing this second letter to the members, the believers in Corinth and in the whole province of Achaia. He is sitting in Macedonia, a small town, a small church, and he writes to the members in Corinth. Last night I was putting on the Google map what is the distance between Macedonia and Corinth. It is about 700 odd miles. In these modern days, it is very easy to travel those dis that distance. But imagine during St. Paul's time, to send a letter, it might have taken six week, weeks or six months. I remember my grandmother from Medak used to write a postcard. And that used to reach Metruda after 40 days. Hmm. After 40 days. Last week, we have been driving to Medak Cathedral. It took hardly one hour, 40 minutes. I was recollecting how technology has grown, how the amenities have grown, how blessed we are in this modern era. We need to make use of all these best opportunities which are available to us. But here St. Paul is putting forth all the hardships what he has been facing. It is not for his sustenance, it is not for his family, or not for something to gain fame in the whole of Asian province. He has taken up the mission of Lord Jesus Christ to plant the churches, to strengthen the believers, and to bring the community of the believers together and to nurture them. And to encourage the members in Corinth, he writes this second letter. Some of the biblical scholars also ascribe this second letter of St. Paul to Corinth as letter of tears. <coughs> letter of tears. Because we see Paul is pouring out his spirit for the kingdom's sake, for the gospel's sake. Whatever he has been passing through as a believer of Jesus Christ, whatever he has been passing through as an apostle of Jesus Christ, the hardships, here we see that he is mentioning. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. He is so conscious. That whatever he is preaching, whatever he is presenting, it should not be discredited. Therefore, he would like to set order in his own life. He would like to bring a discipline in his own life. As believers, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we need to always look at these important personalities. For example, like Paul. For preaching the gospel, he has been prosecuted. For preaching the gospel, he has been put in prison. For preaching the gospel, he has to be harassed. Today, we have every freedom. We have liberty to present the gospel. In our country, we have the privilege and freedom here to carry the Bible. What a blessing it is. How are we following Jesus Christ? How are we presenting Jesus Christ?
to our fellow brothers and sisters. Are we prepared to preach the gospel in the midst of challenging situations? Here St. Paul is writing all the troubles what he has been passing through in riots, in beatings, in imprisonments, in sleepless nights and in hunger. He was in purity, understanding, patience and kindness. These are abstracts for an ordinary human personality. Purity, understanding, <coughs> patience and kindness. When we are supposed to overcome any challenging situations, we will be so much so disturbed. Even sometimes when our children come around and play, we yell at them, saying, that, go out and play. Don't disturb me. I am very angry now. Don't shoot up my blood pressure. I am going to become an abnormal person. This is how we are reluctant to take up any challenging situation in our day-to-day life. But for St. Paul, for him, the mission is to preach the gospel, hard to perish. That was his mission mandate. Who unto to me if I do not preach the gospel? Who unto to me if I do not preach the gospel? That is how St. Paul has taken up this challenging situation. And today we see in the whole of Asian province, he planted several churches bearing fruit. And today we see that the whole church is edified in and through his letters, in and through his testimony. There is no Sunday worship without epistle letter of St. Paul. Always we have been reminded about the mission of the church, the ministry of the church, the responsibility of the church. It is only through the experience of St. Paul we have been strengthened in our mission. And coming back to the gospel lesson question, are you prepared to be seated at the right and left? We all aspire to be with Jesus. We all have aspirations to spend time to be identified or to be called as a disciple of Jesus Christ. But on the other hand, Jesus Christ gives a unique invitation. If you want to follow me, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. It is not a one-time affair in your life, but this should be an affair, everyday affair. It is something that you need to take up the cross of Jesus every day. Following Jesus is not that easy. To be a disciple of Jesus Christ is not that easy. Sometimes you are challenged. Sometimes your family is challenged. Sometimes you are challenged at the place of job. Your job may be at stake. Your business may be at stake. Your relationships may be at stake just because you are a follower of Jesus Christ. But look at Daniel and St. Paul. They did not give up. They had that strong conviction in their life that my Savior is a living God. I follow a living God. We all affirm this faith and we continue this journey. And here we see that Jesus Christ is reminded that the Son of Man comes not to be served, but to serve. That is the mission of the follower of Jesus Christ. We are called to be servants. We are called to be fellow servants of, in the mission of Jesus Christ. <coughs> My dear brothers and sisters, God has been giving us so many opportunities to bear witness to His holy name. How best are we using these opportunities which are coming on our way to present the gospel to spend time in the presence of God. Shall we all bow our heads and pause for a moment in silence, examining ourselves, and let us ask God, Lord, give me an opportunity to be a